Today I'm going to show you how to put an image inside of text all on a Findy Photo 2 on the iPad. This is a really fun technique and surprisingly it's a very easy technique also. I'm going to show you not one but two examples of how to do it. We'll learn a few things along the way so let's get into it. Here we are back inside of Findy Photo 2 on the iPad and the first thing I'm going to do is just to bring up the dock, go to my files icon, click or tap and drag it to the right hand side. And I have got quite a few photos already downloaded. As you can see, all of them are from unsplash.com. Unsplash.com, as I've talked about many times in this channel, is a brilliant place to grab royalty free images. And for the purposes of this video, I think I'm gonna choose this sunset tap and drag it anywhere in this workspace. And it'll make this image into a new project. It'll give it the file name that it currently has. And if I just swipe that away to the right hand side, the project's file name is the same name as the image that we've got from Unsplash. So just to do some good housekeeping, you can either click on these three lines and click the save as, or just swipe your finger and click on this wee icon and we'll maybe just change it to something a bit better. We'll change it to sunset. Could be a sunrise for all I know. Uh, I think it's a sunset though. And I'm just gonna save that into my Affinity folder on my iPad Pro. So it's now saved and if I simply tap into it, that is our stunning sunset photo from unsplash.com. And this here technique today, it's really simple, but it's really impressive. You can do a number of things with it. I may be going to type in summer, but you can do the same for winter or it's a great thing for holiday albums. The front of holiday albums, you can do a variety of things of locations where you've been to, but just get into it. We're just going to tap on our text tool and drag. And again, the great thing about Affinity Photo is it gives you a preview of how big the text is going to be, something like that. And if I type in summer, and I'll maybe click the caps locks and make it all uppercase. And it's a little big, but just by going to our move tool, we can drag that in. And as always, in Affinity Photo 2, two fingers or a finger and a thumb will move the canvas and if you want to zoom in exactly just click this magnifying icon up there and that's not looking too bad but for something like this you really want chunkier text this it's a little too fine this text i want chunkier text so as big as text as possible so we can really get the s's and the u's and the m's just just thick lines to stand out to do that we're going to tap double tap on this text on the top menu now you can see it's changed it's currently Arial. we can click into that or we can click into the sub menu and let's see bold bold's a bit better we'll see if there's any other choices this captain america text i i really like but it doesn't look too too summery some of the edges just looks a wee bit harsh and i'll, I'll put my apple pencil down and really this is where it comes into personal preference of what font to use a nice bold helvetic and new looks quite nice is there any other chunkier text it's just here universal one, but again, these wee edges, I'm not a fan of. There's Super Mario text, looks kind of kind of cool, but again, not we're, what we're looking for. Impact. Impact looks pretty good because it's really quite chunky. And if we move our keyboard down, if we change this up, Impact's not a bad font choice. Or could also be tempted to go to a font website like Defont and look for fonts there. But I'm happy enough with this. You can see it's much better. If I just do two fingers done do, I'll go through all the text we've tried. You can see very, very thin text, very thin lines, and it really just wouldn't sell this effect much. Three fingers, and that'll redo what we've undo, so to speak. And you can see just thicker, chunkier text works so much better. And let's see, and let me just make it a little bigger. Snapping's currently turned on. If Snapping's turned on, you'll see it just snaps. This green line appears and it snaps to the middle. And now this is the fun bit. We'll just go to the Layer Studio on the right hand side. We'll click the Layer Studio. Summer or Summer Text Select it. We'll go to the background text or the background image. Select it. We're going to tap and hold and we're just going to bring it into the middle of our summer text. So the whole layer goes completely blue and boom, just like that. That's the that's the tutorial done. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. No, we're, we're going to do a bit more than just this. It looks great, but we're going to make it look even better. So we're going to come up to the right hand side to our layer studio and we're simply going to tap this plus icon. Now you can notice before we do that, neither of the two layers is selected and that can be important because sometimes if a layer is selected, our fill layer will go in between or it'll make this text white or the background white. So nothing's selected. 
click the plus icon, click the fill layer, and it's white. We don't want white, so we'll click down to the color studio, and we'll just simply make this black. We'll go back into the layer studio and simply just tap and drag this fill layer to the very bottom. And what's happened here is moved it below this picture. And if we click this icon here, the wee arrow, you can see it's not actually at the very bottom. We need to tap it. It's just the bottom of the group. We need to tap it. And sometimes it can be a little bit fiddly. So I'm actually move that up to the top. I'll close this group. And now if I move it down, it shouldn't be put in the group. There we are. It's put at the bottom. And hopefully you've noticed the difference there. You can actually see this fill there is sticking out a little bit. It was in, and I'll just do it here, in the, in the group. And that means it was below the image. And sometimes that can, uh, that can catch you out. So if it ever happens, just bring it to the top. And then we can close this group and bring it to the bottom. And that is really, really nice. I'm, I'm actually over the moon with how that's looking. And we can do a bit more with this if we want. We'll bring this group down again. And if we want, we can move this text, or that's moving the whole group, sorry. So the whole group's being moved. I don't want to do that. Click on the background layer, and I've clicked the move tool layer now. This is a lot of fun because we can actually move the background layer into wherever we want and, uh, there is not bad, but I definitely like the horizon. I like the sun. We can even scale it down a little so it goes closer to the edge, just so we get more details of the picture. And this is where it all comes down to preference. We could move it to roughly 50%. So it's 50% water, 50% sky, something like that. I'll move that away. How's that look? Quite like that. I love that the sun's in there. I'll tap on it again. Do I want it all sky? I don't think it looks as impressive with all sky. I don't think it looks as impressive with all water. So could we do the water kind of two thirds down? That doesn't look bad either. And it brings in some of these clouds. And this is just where it comes down to personal preference. Uh, let's try 50% again. I like it that the sun was reflecting here. I'm just talking out loud at the moment. I'm really just, uh, I'm not sure. I might bring it slightly. I'm just looking. I don't like it the way this is in line with the S. So... I think I might settle with something like that. Just uh, the rule of thirds, we'll maybe look at the rule of thirds at another time, but the rule of thirds is, is sometimes 50-50 just doesn't look. 50% sky, 50% water. Sometimes looks nice, but the rule of thirds sometimes is uh, if a horizon is on the kind of the bottom third line. So if you can imagine an imaginary grid here and here, if you divide this into thirds, you can see the waters coming up there. And, and that looks really really well. I'm, I'm really happy with that. And I'll maybe just hide all the toolbars to see how that's looking. Some are, or better yet, you know, you know what this, uh, this will look so much better. Uh, what, what could I change the text to here? And th this is a good example this, to show you that it doesn't need to stay on somewhere you can do something else. And uh, there's one thing this screams out to me. I'll give you a second to think, what could I change the text to? When I see something like this, what am I thinking? So we'll go to our layer studio. We'll make sure our summer layer selected. We'll click on the text. We'll bring it down a little again using two fingers. And double tap it. And here we go. Click the caps lock. Bring down. Of course, it is Baywatch. And if I just snap, I'll make it a little bit smaller. Snap it, hopefully into the middle. Click in our background layer. Is it just me? Let me know in the comments below. Was anyone else thinking Baywatch or was it just me? And I think that looks pretty good. And don't worry, I'm not going to sing the song, although I'm tempted to, or even do the theme tune. No one, no one wants that, Andrew. Not today. But off camera, you know I'm going to put that in Spotify. And I'm not joking. Listen to a bit of that while I'm at it on it. Anyway, what I've done here, which I quite like, is, is again, using the rule of thirds, we've got like half water, half sky. And I, I quite like the way the horizon's in between the A here. And it's cutting through the B and again the A. And that's looking quite nice. There you go. Sometimes in the tutorial, you don't know where things are going. So uh, it was summer. It was, I was crying out for Baywatch. And uh, we'll maybe do, we'll maybe try that again because it is very easy just to show you on a different way we could do it. So we'll just hit back and there's our Baywatch. That's looking really, really well. Could be the thumbnail. Who knows? 
and we'll click on our folder icon again and we've got this brilliant photo of New York City. We'll just tap and drag it into our live docs menu. We'll just swipe our file sap away and just tap into this. This here tutorial was inspired by a YouTube short. If you don't know, I'm doing daily shorts. Most days, I think I've done 21 days in a row or something like that. And then one or two days of a break. But most days you'll find me doing a YouTube short with some tricks and tips and maybe different things that you may or may not find interesting. And this was a YouTube short. So again, we've got our image. It looks absolutely fantastic. We're going to tap on the text and we're just going to type in New York. This time I've chosen to do two lines and again I'll maybe just tap this and you can tap and drag the text. You can either double tap that'll select a word or just tap and drag and that selects both words and I want this center aligned so up in the top menu we'll just click the paragraph icon we'll click center aligned we'll bring this down and we had it impact last time Maybe try this Captain America text and that looks, that doesn't look too bad on this occasion. I might just bring the gap of this text down a wee bit. So we'll go into our text studio and leading here, we can either tap and drag or we can use the plus and minus. But I like using my finger just to get in quite close and let's see how close we can go. And sometimes if it goes too close, you can also, also tap on it and put in a custom value but I quite like that so we'll go to the, the move tool and we'll bring that up and it's all personal preference I think the YouTube short I maybe made this one line but we'll try making it two lines one line might be better to get the Statue of Liberty but we'll we'll do two lines so I'm happy with the positioning of that we'll go back to our layer studio on the right hand side and I'm actually going to duplicate this background and I'll show you why I'm going to do that in a second. To duplicate background, you can do a few different ways, but if we just tap on these three dots, duplicate, select it, you will now see we have two backgrounds. And if I simply tap, again, tap and hold and bring our background into our layer text, you'll see it's disappeared. It hasn't actually disappeared because if we hide our bottom background, you'll see our New York City coming through. If I reveal this background layer, it looks as if nothing's happened just because it's it's masked out the exact thing. You could do something mad like slightly offset it and uh, that is looking a wee bit trippy and you can't quite see what's happening unless you do that, which again looks a bit mad. Two fingers to undo. We're going to click on our background layer and do that fill layer again. It's currently white and I'll maybe keep it white on this occasion because it's made a fill layer in between the background layer and this text. We can text. We'll just close this group so you can see what's happening. So that is our text layer that we've masked out. That's our white background fill layer in between. And if we're clicking the fill layer, clicking these three dots, we'll actually change the opacity down just a little. And uh, that really is, what's that? 80%. 80 and that's quite nice because what you can see what's happening there is you can still see the background, but the foreground, the text is really standing out really, really well because uh, it is nice to see the Statue of Liberty. And another thing we can do, maybe just to enhance this a little bit better, is to click on our text layer, go to our Layer Effects Studio, and we're going to click on Outline. Check it to make sure it's checked. And now if we scroll up here, it's actually making a bit of a stroke. And I don't want to go, I don't want to go wild. Maybe just bring it down to say, let's just eyeball it. Something like that doesn't look bad. And we can actually change this to white to see how it looks. And yeah, I think that's looking better, better than the black. Just take that away. Yeah, I think that's not looking bad at all. If you were curious, maybe it might look better on a black background. So we'll click on the fill layer. We'll click on our plus icon. We'll click on the fill layer. It's white. If we click here on the color studio, we can make it any color, but we'll change it to black. Then we'll go back into our layer studio. We'll hide this fill layer just by tapping on the dot. The black fill layer, we'll click on these three dots and we'll bring it down. Um, again, we'll bring it down to about 80% just to see how it looks. And it's it's harder to see the background, but that stands out much more. If we went our layer effects just for the text icon and uncheck this. 
That there looks pretty good. I think I prefer that. Just tap on the view tool, hide everything. I think I prefer that. We've still, you can see a bit of the Statue of Liberty. You could bring it up even more, but that looks pretty cool. Or we can even, if we change the background, click on this background layer, and this is the background layer of the text. To select multiple layers in the Findy photo, you swipe. So we've got one layer selected, and if we swipe this other layer, now both layers are selected. The reason we're, we're doing that is because if we've only got this layer selected and try to change it, the background layer's not selected. So we need to check, we need to select both, and now we can change both layers, two fingers to undo. And I'm doing this just to just to bring it up now, it's out of proportion. So if it goes out of proportion, we'll want to keep it in proportion. So one finger will keep this in proportion. We're going to go quite big just so we can maybe get the Statue of Liberty in. Again, one finger and maybe this text just isn't going to, it's maybe going to be too big to allow us. Oh, we're getting a little bit off it here. It's going to be more Statue of Liberty than the New York skyline. But that looks, you know what? Oh, decisions. And that's the great thing about design. It's all to do with decisions. That there, just the the flame and the end. I think it's nicer than there. Could we even have it in the middle? The flame up there. Oh, that's really nice. Oh, I don't know what to do now. So we've got something like that. Comments, write in the comments below what you prefer. We've got the, we've got the skyline. And if we make a... Uh, Scale it up a little, we could get the, the one World Trade Center building nice and high in there. That looks good, but there's a lot going on. So if I double tap or if I tap two fingers and bring it back to that, you know what? I think that looks really, really, really nice. We can click the fill there and bring it up so it's completely black and that's nice, but it is nice having... I've brought it back down a wee bit. Yeah, I think we're gonna I think we're gonna scale up a wee bit again. So it's the Statue of, of Liberty. And I think that looks really, really nice. I would be tempted maybe just to click on this fill layer, the three dots bring up so it's all black. That looks really, really nice. Uh there's lots of options, there's lots of different things we can do. If I just bring that down and well magnify that so it fits full. And I'm really happy with that. I think that looks really good. You can see there's so many decisions. Let me know in the comments below. Did I make the right decision? Should the skyline be there? Should we have some of the background coming through? It all depends on the project. We'll even move this text down a little or move the text in. But chunky text, as we were talking about earlier, chunky text looks really well. And uh, I think that'll do us for the day. Thank you. So there you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. More importantly, hopefully you learned something. Try it out for yourself and you'll be impressed just how easy it is to make. As always, please like this this video if you found any value in it. Please subscribe as there's more videos coming out soon. And if you want to learn how to install different fonts in Affinity Photo 2 in the iPad, just click this video now and I'll see you there.